Hi everybody, welcome to VLSI Point. So this is the second video of FPGA based system design playlist. And in today's video, we are going to cover FPGA block diagram. It's a very important topic for your interviews and for your written exam. So watch the entire video carefully because I'm going to cover each and every part of this block diagram in very much detail. I hope this video will be helpful for you. So without any delay, let's get started today's video. So this is how the FPGA block diagram look like. So we have CLB, CLB stands for configurable logic block. Then we have the IO that is the input output blocks and the programmable interconnects also called the switch matrix. So one by one we will understand each and every element. So these are the FPGA blocks, configurable logic block. So, so FPGAs are the prefabricated silicon chips that can be programmed electrically to implement the digital design. So let's see how these blocks are working. So we have configurable logic block which is CLB. So these configurable logic blocks provide the basic computation and the storage element used in the digital system. A basic logic element consists of the programmable combinational logic like flip-flop and some fast carry logic to reduce the area and the delay cost. The second one is input-output blocks. So these input-output blocks are used to interface the logic blocks and routing architectures to the external component. So the IO pad and the surrounding logic circuit form as an IO cell, we can say. The third one is programmable interconnect. So these interconnect establishes a connection between the logic block and the input output blocks to complete a user defined design units. So it consists of multiplexers, pass transistors and the tri-state buffers. Pass transistors and the multiplexers are used in a logic clusters to connect the logic elements. So let's have a more detailed block diagram of this configurable logic block. So here we have LUTs, flip-flops and multiplexer. In this LUT we are providing A, B, C, D, four inputs. Here we have the D flip-flop, clock and reset is given to this and then the multiplexer, LUT output and flip-flop output is given to this multiplexer. So any combinational circuit of four input can be mapped on the LUT and here is the multiplexer which selects either LUT output or the flip-flop output as a final output. So this is how this configurable logic block works. The second one is programmable interconnect. So you can see here we have connected this A, B and C blocks. This is the A, this is the B and this is the C and how we have connected these three blocks. We have chosen this part, but this is not the only path. We can choose another path also. So there are multiple possibilities. So let's see how this programmable interconnect works. So the first question arises why we are calling it programmable. So the interconnection between the multiple CLBs are not hardwired. Rather the connection happens with the various wires through the switches. Here are the connections between the A, B and C you can see. So the path is predictable or the variable. Interconnects are segmented means the lines are not continuous. Just by mapping the logic and placing between the selected CLBs will not predict the actual path. As I already told you, the given path is not the only part. We can have other paths also. So that's why we are calling the paths or the lines are not continuous. So here after the logic has been placed on the particular CLB, path needs to be routed. So once the routing takes place, the actual path can be predicted, the delay can be predicted. So this is how this programmable interconnect works. The third one is input output block. So this is how the block diagram here we have. This is the tri-state control which is given to the multiplexer. This is a programmable multiplexer. Then this is the output enable signal which is given to this output buffer. It is a tri-state buffer and here we have input buffer also. This is an external environment. So let's see how it is working. So it provides a bi-directional interface between the IO pins and the FPGA internal logic. So there is an input buffer as you can see in this figure, a tri-state buffer enabled by the programmable multiplexer. So now we will see how exactly it is working. Input buffer is responsible for carrying the logic through IO pins from external environment to the FPGA. 
coming to the output buffer it's a tri state buffer so when the output enable is zero it passes the output value that means the logic from fpga will be carried according to this output buffer to the external environment so when the output has to be driven high impedance state then with the help of output enable pin buffer goes in the high impedance state so tri state control part controls the output buffer to either act like an active buffer or a tri state buffer like high impedance state so this is how these input output blocks are working hope it is clear to you so guys here we have understand the entire FPGA block diagram, how CLBs are working, how programmable interconnects are working and how these input output blocks are working. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment box and don't forget to join our telegram community. Already 600 plus members are there. They were discussing their doubts, sharing the useful materials and getting the job updates. So guys, this is about today's video. We will meet in the next video. See you soon.